your ACOS is high, then you're 100% doing something wrong, which is why in this video, I'm going to share the 10 strategies that we used to decrease ACOS by 25% on our real account and quadruple sales at the same time. I've put all 10 strategies on Notion Doc, which I'll leave in the description of this video for free, so you can check it out whenever you want. I'm going to screen share each one of them and explain how you can implement it into your own account. Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to clear up before I get into the actual strategies. The first thing is this is not my personal account. This is a friend's account who I've worked with one-on-one -on -one for a year now. Second thing is the actual numbers. Um, so before we got involved, they were doing around $60,000 in monthly ad sales at a 45% ACOS. And after we were involved, they started doing $270,000 in monthly ad sales at a 20% ACOS. We primarily use 10 strategies to achieve this. The first one is ASIN prioritization. So what we did was we concentrated all of our spending into our top performing ASIN. And essentially the way we found that ASIN was by looking at business reports and the product report in the campaign manager. And essentially what we were looking for is an ASIN that's contributing a large percentage of the total sales, but wasn't getting a large percentage of ad spend. So we found an ASIN that was doing around 80% of revenue for the account and only spending around 20 to 30% of the total budget. Then we looked at the product report and we found that that ASIN's ACOS was 15%, while the average ACOS for the rest of the products was somewhere between 30 and 60%, depending on the ASIN. So what that signaled to us was that this ASIN was pretty high potential. We checked the search volume and we found that there's a massive opportunity to scale. And we kind of moved our entire ad budget into this ASIN. So you we went from spending maybe you know 20% of the total budget on this ASIN to almost 90%. So we were spending, I believe, around $48,000 per month on just this ASIN, whereas the total account used to spend only $28,000 per month. This was one of the most impactful strategies. I'd say 50 to 60% of our results were because of this. After that, we also focused a lot on bid optimization. So essentially with PPC, the two things that control your ACoS is how much you earn per click and how much you spend per click. So if you earn $3 per click, you need to only pay $1 if you want to get the 33% ACoS, right? And the way you actually change your cost per click is through bidding. So there are two ways to bid. You can bid manually and you can bid using software. I'll cover manual bidding first. Essentially, there are two main strategies for manual bidding. There is RPC or EPC bidding, which is revenue or earnings per click bidding, which essentially means you take your current earnings per click and you multiply it by your ACOS target to get what your ideal cost per click would be. Right? So if, again, you're earning $4 per click and you're targeting a 25% ACOS, your ideal cost per click be $1. Right? So you have to bid based on that. There are a couple of issues with this. Number one is that your earnings per click are always changing. Number two, that you get your ideal CPC, not your ideal bid. You know, a $1 CPC can mean anywhere from like a 25 cent bid to a $1.50 bid, right? Because you can bid a $1.50 and get a $1 CPC, and you can also bid 50 cents and get a $1 CPC. But it still does work to a certain extent, and it's a good option, especially if you're new to PPC. Then you have rule-based bidding, which is essentially when you create your own rules and your own systems, and you essentially say, if X happens, I'm going to do Y. So if ACOS goes above a certain threshold by a certain amount, I'll drop my bids by this much. This, again, does work, but this requires more experience because you have to think out the actual rules that you're going to be implementing, and you have to make sure that they work. And that might take some knowledge, some experience, and some time and effort. That's why we also have the option to do automated bidding. So essentially what automated bidding is, is handing over your bids to a system or an AI algorithm like AI Hello, which can automatically adjust your bids every single day on every single keyword based on the ACoS target that you give it. So you tell the algorithm that you need a 30% ACoS, for example, and every single day it will go in adjust your bids on a keyword level to actually get you to that 30 percent this is obviously my favorite type of bidding number one because i'm biased i run an ai ppc software company and number two is it doesn't require any effort on the seller's end and number three is just more accurate you're more likely to achieve your target acos if you use this type of bidding next up we have budget optimization um, this is a bit more of a risky tactic so I'd usually avoid this unless you have a certain group of campaigns that started doing much worse or you need to cut back budget anyways. So this is something that you can just do either way. 
Uh, but essentially what you're doing is you're looking at the campaign's 30 day spend that saves $300, like the example in the picture over here. And you want to lower the daily budget so that the daily budget multiplied by 30 is less than the last 30 days spent for this campaign. So over here, they spent $300 over 30 days at a 50% ACoS. We dropped the daily budget to $5 so that over 30 days, it could only spend $150 uh, total at a 50% ACoS. So all this doesn't actually improve the campaign's performance. It decreases the percentage of your total spend going to bad campaigns, which brings down the account's ACoS. Again, this is risky. You're probably going to lose ad sales by doing this, and you might lose organic sales. But again, if you have a group of campaigns that are starting to do much worse than usual, you can do this short term while you work on fixing your bids or your keywords or your place in boost or whatever else it is at that point. After that, you also have search term negation. So something that we've seen in this account was that there are a lot of phrase campaigns, auto campaigns, broad campaigns, category targeting campaigns set up that had no negatives. And if you have any of those campaign types or match types set up, you're going to have a bunch of wasteful search terms that you're spending money on that don't actually produce sales, right? And the one way to actually fix that is to put negative keywords in. So there are two methods, again, for negation. You have manual negation, then you have automated negation. Manual negation can be split into two sub-methods. The first one is relevancy negation. So relevancy negation is just negating keywords as soon as you set up the campaign because you know they're not relevant. So if you're setting up ads for men's shoes, for example, you might just go ahead and put the word women in negative phrase just because you're not selling this shoe to women, right? So this can save you some of your budget initially and it's just entirely based on the relevancy of the keyword. Then you have cost slash ROI negation, which is most of the negation work you're gonna be doing. This is essentially just going through your search term report and figuring out if you have any search terms that spent too much money and either didn't produce sales at all, so we just negate those right out, or we can look at search terms that have produced sales, but did it at a very high ACoS. So we can negate those and move them into exact match campaigns and bid on them separately to bring their ACoS down. This is what you can do for manual negation. Then you also have automated negation. Automated negation, again, is just handing this over to a system. You just tell the system how aggressive or conservative you want to be with your negation. So with AI Hello, for example, what you do is you just select like, hey, I'm willing to pay 2x my normal customer acquisition cost before I negate the search term. Or I'm only willing to pay 1.4x. And from there, the software will go through all of your campaigns, all of your search terms, everything, every single day to make sure that anything that crosses that threshold is automatically negated. This usually performs better because most sellers aren't going to have the time to go through their search term reports and figure out what they need to negate every day. And most of them are just going to forget to do it or won't look at a large enough time period because you're only out 60 days on Amazon. Most of them aren't going to look at the span of a search term over like six months because no one's downloading and keeping those search term reports for you. So we can track the spend over an infinite time period and we can automatically negate everything once it hits that threshold. So this ends up being more efficient for most others and less effort. After that, we have split analysis. So with split analysis, we're mainly just analyzing your account to figure out what campaigns are doing well, what campaigns aren't doing well, and kind of what to do about it. So essentially what we do is we open three tabs. Tab one is just all of your campaigns with no filters. Tab two is your campaigns with a filter for ACoS below the total accounts ACoS. So in this case, it was ACoS under 21.3%. Then tab three was any campaign with an ACoS above 21.3%. So the first tab is just used as a benchmark. The second tab is used to show your good campaigns. Those usually spend below 50% of your budget, but they produce more than 50% of your sales. And they're operating at a much lower ACoS to both your overall account ACoS and the ACoS of those campaigns that are doing bad. So these are your winner campaigns. And this is where you actually make your money. Then you also have other campaigns that are bringing up the total ACoS for the account. So over here, the gap isn't that big because this account's pretty well optimized. But usually you'd see that the difference between the baseline ACoS and the low ACoS and the large or the bad campaign ACoS is pretty large, right? And essentially what your job is, is to either increase spend on those good campaigns so that they represent a larger percentage of the account's total spend or to decrease spend on those bad campaigns. That can happen through pausing campaigns, decreasing budgets, lowering bids, lowering placement boosts, removing bad keywords. 
but essentially what it is is just figuring out how to decrease spend on the bad side and increase spend on the good side and again you might want to look at trends so for example you open your bad campaigns and you find that they're all one ad type like auto for example you might be able to guess that you know you're not putting in enough negatives so your auto conversion rate is much worse you need to start being more diligent about putting those negatives in right or if you open it up and you find out it's all for one asin you might pause advertising on that asin entirely because that asin is bringing up your total acos for the entire account so you can get insights on a product level out of this on an ad type level and on a match type level and you can also make quick decisions like pausing keywords campaigns decreasing budgets decreasing bids decreasing placement boosts and just doing things to get your spend down on those bad campaigns and obviously you can do the opposite for the good campaigns you can increase placement boosts you can increase budgets if you're running out of budget you can increase bids and you can set up more campaigns for the ad types that seem to be working well in that group and for the ASINs that seem to be doing well so this is a pretty useful campaign analysis method um, after that you also have keyword expansion and trimming keyword expansion and trimming uh, is essentially adding more good keywords in and removing bad keywords so essentially what you're doing is either manual keyword refinement or automated keyword refinement and i'll explain them both manual keyword refinement is going to be split into three main strategies there's the long tail strategy which i think everyone needs to use and essentially it's just focusing on low competition lower volume longer tail keywords that are going to be cheaper to advertise on and will have a higher conversion rate an example of that would be advertising on ethiopian medium roast coffee beans versus advertising on just coffee ethiopian medium roast coffee beans is going to have a lower search volume but a click is probably just going to be much cheaper than a click on a keyword like coffee and it's probably going to convert better if your product is relevant to that search term so this is one way to bring your acos down another way is generic versus branded keywords and essentially what that means is not going after your competitors search terms initially because those tend to be very expensive to advertise on because they're not as relevant for those search terms as your competitor is and at the same time um, you're not going to convert that well on them so what i would do is i just focus on generic non-branded search terms at least until you get enough reviews or your listing content is good enough or you're just ready to kind of be more aggressive with your advertising and try to focus on stealing market share instead of a cost and profitability but until that happens you should only be advertising on generic search terms um, after that you can also kill bad keywords so some keywords are just never going to do well either you're not going to be able to get placements at a decent cpc maybe it's converting at a very low rate or it's just wasting your money and not selling anything at all um, what i do is i just cut those keywords out that can mean either pausing the keyword or just lowering the bid so much that you're rarely ever serving impressions and that should mostly fix that problem after that we have automated keyword refinement which is again what we do at ai hello um, so what you do is you just tick these off so remove bad keywords check add new optimal keywords check you know um, get customer search terms check and this is just to adjust your bids on those new keywords after they launch and essentially what happens is the software looks through your keywords identifies what's bad removes it identifies you know what's working and finds more keywords like it identifies different search terms that you're not tar targeting directly and adds those into your campaigns and it pretty much just optimizes your targeting for you automatically after that we have day parting day parting used to be pretty rare because it's kind of difficult to do uh, manually but over the last few years several softwares including ours started offering day parting uh, and it's become pretty popular especially in certain categories like for example categories that mostly sell to b2b usually see much poorer performance during the weekends and outside business hours so they've been day parting to kind of conserve their budget during those hours um, other products like coffee for example might sell better in the morning sleep gummies might sell better at night so if you're in one of those categories you could probably benefit a lot from this and essentially what happens is we're just going to be increasing bids and decreasing them throughout the day and throughout the week based on consolidated data about how those certain hours and certain days perform after that we also have um, ad type and targeting type segmentation uh, you can just get those numbers directly on our dashboard or you could just make like a couple excel sheets and figure them out yourself but essentially what we're doing is we're just splitting out ad types and targeting types and we're seeing like how much we're spending on each one and how much we're making 
that kind of gives you visibility into how you're supposed to distribute your budget. So over here, you can see, for example, that product targeting has spent 1,000 and is operating at a 25% ACoS, whereas auto keyword and product targeting is only at a six, uh, only at 1,300 in spend and at a 16.5% ACoS. So more of this budget should be moving into those auto campaigns. And you can kind of look at the other campaigns as well and figure out that category is doing very bad. You should probably cut that out. Sponsored brands maybe needs to get its bids lowered um, from 28%. ACoS this probably means we're not doing that well. So we could possibly lower the bids a bit, maybe 10, 15, 20% on those campaigns and so on. So you can kind of get visibility into how, to, how you're spending your money and you can kind of make decisions based on that. Uh, after that, we have placement boosts. Um, essentially, what happens is you have several placements on Amazon. You have top of search, rest of search, product detail page, and those are going to perform differently for each product and for each category. So what you can do is you can add different placement boosts for each campaign and take advantage of that. So for example, if you're converting twice as well on top of search, you might want to add a 100% top of search placement boost so you can increase your visibility and get more sales. And you know, soon enough, hopefully, we're going to get negative placement boosts, which hasn't been on the roadmap for Amazon for now, but hopefully in the foreseeable future, we'd be able to lower these placement boosts as well. Finally, we have CVR optimization. Uh, this is almost a separate video in of itself, but essentially it's playing around with your listing content, your images, your titles, your a content, your bullet points, whatever else it is, and running split tests to try to get your conversion rate up, which both increases your organic rank, increases your sales, and decreases your ACoS. I have a separate podcast episode about this, so you can go in and listen to that. And that's pretty much going to give you all the information that you need to get started. That's pretty much it. These are all 10 strategies. I hope this video was useful. If you'd like to use our help uh, to kind of set some of this stuff up and maybe automate it to our software, or you just need general advice, go to aihello.com, book a call, mention that you came from this video, and I'll show up myself, and I'll give you real advice. I'll do a live audit for your account. I'll give you real actionable advice so you can actually implement and achieve results with whether or not you decide to use the software. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again later.